Welcome to a video on high pass filter design. So, in this video, we will look at second order KRC filters first, especially for the high pass configuration. So, we will look at the circuit, some equations, some component choices and tweaks, and then we will do cascaded design from a table using the design problems and we will check the final result out in simulations. Right, so first, the Q factor. So this is for high pass filters and the KRC uses positive feedback so we can have a bit of a, a Q factor here. So if the Q factor is too high, you can have resonance. Um, but with a high Q factor, we can also have a very sharp cutoff or roll off rate. But beware that some filters can have a bit of instability due to this high Q factor. And with lower Q factors, we can have more of these stable filters with this long roll off right here. Right. So the high pass. KRC filter, the resistors and capacitors just switched positions from the low pass filter. So C1, C2, R1, and R2 is responsible for the frequency, and RA and RB is responsible for the Q factor. Okay, so the pass band gain is also dependent on RB and RA. And looking at the Q factor, it's dependent on all the components. So, if we would go and choose all the resistors for same values and the capacitors for same values, that is the equal component design, everything reduces down to very short equations. So, 1 over 2 pi RC for the frequency. 1 over 3 minus k for the q factor and always ensure that k is smaller than 3 or else you will turn your filter into an oscillator. Right, and that leaves us with our passband gain as 1 plus rb over ra. Then there is the unity gain design where we choose ratios between our capacitors and the resistors. Our passband gain will be 1 volt per volt and now our Q and our cutoff frequency is more dependent on the ratios of the components. Okay, typically with N is 1, we will have similar capacitors. But we will focus more on the equal component design. Right, so designing from a table, it is typically a cascaded design from normalized values in a table. So for a filter with an odd number, we can use KRC sections making up the even part and then we should just add an odd part by adding a third order filter. So a KRC section, a third, first order filter will give us a third order. Okay, note that if we need to do gain correction, we can do that in the first order stage that we add. For the even KRC filter, we can just add KRC sections as far as we want, and two of them will give us a filter with a even number, and we might require an extra gain correction stage if we want a different final gain. Okay, so for low pass filters, that was the previous video, we multiplied our design frequency with our table value. For the high pass filter, we will divide with the value on the table. So that is taking our low pass filter values in the table and making them high pass filter values. That is a nice thing of a normalized table. Dividing by the table value just flips the, the response around. 
Right, so let's go over to some design problems. So the first problem is to design a third order Bessel high pass filter with a 10 kilohertz cut off frequency and a final gain of 10 decibels. We must use one nanofarad capacitor in the design, use equal components, and let's calculate all the components required, selecting E192 resistor values. Afterwards, we will simulate the problem to see if our filter responds like we want it to. Okay, so third order, 10 kilohertz, bezel, 20 decibel final gain. So that would be one KRC section and one first order section and gain correction like this. So on the Bessel table, if we go to order three, we will get three values. So the KRC section and the first order section is this last frequency right here. So we are going to divide by these two frequencies in our design to make our low pass approximation a high pass approximation. Right. So our first design frequency is then 10 kHz divided by 1.453. That gives us 6.8823 kHz. Using one nanofarad capacitor, equal components, our first resistor value will be 23.125 kilo ohms, or 23.2 from the standard values. Using our 0.691 Q factor, we get a gain of 1.5582 volts per volt. Choosing our A as 1 kilo ohm, the closest a table value for a resistor is 556 ohms and that will make up our Q factor from our gain. So this is the gain from this stage which we will use in the next stage. Okay, first the frequency of a second stage, so 10 kilohertz divided by 1.327 gives us 7.5 kilohertz. Plugging that into a normal low uh, high pass filter equation like this, we get 21.12 kilo ohms or just 21 kilo ohms from the standard values. Using the gain from the previous stage, we can calculate the gain required by this last stage. And we want a final gain of 10 volts per volt. So 10 divided by 1.5528 from the previous one gives us a gain of 6.44. Choosing resistor 4 as 1 kilo ohm, we get 5.42 kilo ohms for basically the RB of this stage. So the feedback resistor R5. Okay, so that is our design. Let's go over to the simulation and see how it. So I built our high pass filter in LT Spice. Let's do 100 hertz to a 1 meg simulation. And let's see what we get out. Okay, so. Our pass band is 20 dBs. Here on the edge, you will see that it starts to fall off again. This is due to the gain bandwidth product of the op amp we're using. But if we focus here on our filter itself, let's see where the minus 3 dB point is. Let's go to 17 decibels. And that is at 10 kilohertz. Okay, but we can see that we have a very smooth roll off right here. Okay, this is third order, so we should see 60 dB, so right here at 
minus 40. And considering this is basal, our cutoff is a bit, our cutoff frequency is at 10, um, 10 kilohertz, but the actual point where our final cutoff rate is a bit further away from where we measure our cutoff frequency. So we can see that we roughly have a decade later a minus 60 dB per decade dK. Okay, this is not minus, this is positive 60 dBs per decade. So in the end, it becomes um, positive 60, but it's not as quick as the Chevy Chef or the Butterworth to go to the, the cutoff rate that you expect. Okay, but this is a very nice basal um, design right here, and it is doing exactly what it should be doing. All right, let's jump over to a second problem. So the second problem here is to design a fourth order uh, one decibel Chevy Chef high pass filter at 10 kilohertz, also 20 dBs uh, final gain using one nanofarad capacitor, same as the previous problem. Okay, so the one dB Chevy Chef is the very aggressive cut off. Uh, cut off filter with a very very long pass band and the ripples in it. Right, so fourth order, here we have a second order KRC, another second order KRC and a gain correction stage right here. Right, let's look at this in the table. So, Q1, F1 is our first stage, F2 and Q2 is our second stage for our fourth order. And we are going to be dividing by these values right here to get our low pass converted to a high pass response. The Q factors basically remains the same. So for our first KRC stage, we divide 10 kilohertz by 0.993 and we get 10.07 10 kilohertz. Using equal components, one nanofarad capacitor, our resistors work out at 15.8 kiloohms. And with that aggressive Q factor of 3.559, our gain should be 2.71. 9 volts per volts choosing RA 1 kilo ohm gives us a 1.72 kilo ohm resistor for RB. Okay, and that is the first stage designed. This 2.719 volts per volts is going to the gain correction stage. Then the second stage 10k divided by 0.529 gives us 18. 904 kilohertz right there. Choosing one nanofarad capacitors, our resistors work out at 8.419 kilo ohms, and the closest is 8.45. So that will have effect in our frequency response. So our ripples will not be in the positions where they should be, and our ripple will be a bit more than the 1 dB that we are designing for. These filters are extremely sensitive to the component choices. Okay, our second Q factor is a bit less aggressive and we require a gain of 1.68 volt per volt. So 1 kilo ohm for RA gives us 681 ohms for RB. This 1.6807 goes over to the gain correction stage as well. Our final gain should be 20 decibels, which is 10 volts per volts. So the total gain divided by the first two stages 
gives us that we should have 2.6637 volts per volts for our last amplifier. So 1 kilo ohm and 1.67 kilo ohm will provide the correct amount of gain in the end. So let's go over to simulation and see if we get the response that we want. Right, so I built this in LT Spice. Again, 100 hertz to 1 meg simulation. Let's run this and see what we get out. Right, we can already see the ripple here and the very fast cut off rate. So if we were to zoom in on this, we can see our ripple happening. This right here again is due to the gain bandwidth product of our op amp. So we have one, two, three, four, fourth order, and we can see the nice ripple. So this is between 21.6. Let's call it 21.4 dBs and 22 point bit more than 4 dBs. Okay, so this ripple is roughly 1 decibel. Let's look for our minus 3 dB cutoff point. So that should be from 20 down to 17. And that is 9.03 kilohertz. That is a bit off due to that component that we can't pick um, exactly where we want it. But this is fairly accurate to what we want. And if we were to go one decade from this point to right here, that is almost minus 80 decibels. Oh, this is from 20 to 60, sorry, right here. Um, so yeah, since our cutoff is not exactly where we want it, this is almost 80 decibels per decade. We are a little bit off. That is due to component choices in the end. But, we roughly have our Chevy Chef response that we wanted. Okay, let's compare the two filters that we built in another simulation. So running the comparison, this is our basal, this is our Chevy Chef. Let's get rid of the phase plot. So here we can see the ripple and the down and the higher cutoff rate and the lower cutoff rate. Third order, fourth order, we have a very, very smooth cutoff and then the very aggressive cutoff of our Chevy Chef. And there is a bit of a difference in the gain and that is also to our due to our component choices. Okay, and there we designed two high pass filters using the tables. Thank you for watching.